At a recent Senate Foreign Relations Committee hearing on AI in China, Senator Ricketts questioned experts about the future of artificial intelligence and whether the U.S. must pursue AGI to stay competitive with China. Watch their exchange right here. Is AGI the correct outcome to pursue in terms of our strategic competition with communist China? And then when we're thinking about this, are there milestones we should be looking at to determine whether or not who's ahead in this AI race, assuming that we're going after completely different goals? Senator, I believe we both want to build very capable AI systems, like the phrase AGI references, and also want to deploy AI as broadly as possible across our economy in every segment, not just in the technology sector. I think in China, there's been a challenge when it comes to training the most advanced AI systems because of this compute gap. Chinese firms can train quite good models, but there still is a gap that remains that they've struggled to close because of their lack of access to computing power. I'll call your attention to a paper and a new model that DeepSeek released uh, just this week, an update on the model they trained earlier this year that attracted so much attention. And in that paper, they called attention to the ways they had to tweak their model to take account of the fact that they didn't have all the chips they needed. This speaks to the challenge of training truly frontier models without access to advanced compute, a challenge that will grow over time as America's compute advantage compounds. And I think this is one of the reasons why China is focusing more on applications, because they have to, uh, where our companies can pursue more generally capable AI systems. Okay. And is there a way, if, if they have to, for, I mean, is the, the just then just continue to do what we're doing so we continue to have that gap and then they're forced to do the applications because they don't have a choice? Is that fair? I think that's right, Senator, and I think our companies are also doing the applications. Yeah. Applications are certainly not a bad thing, but it's good to have both the super capable systems and the applications. Right. Mr. Allen? I would certainly echo that American companies are absolutely going to pursue applications because that's where so much of the economic value and opportunity is going to come from. You mentioned, Senator, physical AI as a dimension, and I absolutely agree that this is an area that the Chinese government has identified that they might have an advantage simply because of their overwhelming manufacturing capacity in associated electronics industries. But I would say that advanced AI capabilities here still matter. If you think back to my point earlier about autonomous vehicles, we're now large language model-like capabilities are being integrated into the autonomous driving stacks of these systems. Humanoid robotics are going to be endowed with large language models if they're going to interact with human users in any kind of industrial or consumer-facing setting. And all of these things, uh, there's an opportunity to make China's life easy and to make China's life hard. For more congressional news, stay tuned to Congress Clips. And thanks for watching.